Good morning, once again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh, coming this morning to worship and praise the great God. We're so glad. Uh, let us uh, please follow me with a call to worship. And it comes from Psalm 96. Sing a new song of gratitude and praise. Our God is God of all creation. Great is the Lord and great is God's love. God's love calls us here. Let the heavens be glad, let the mountains rejoice. Even the trees sing for joy. For God is God of all. Let us say our opening prayer together. God of heaven and earth, we call upon your name as we gather for worship and praise. Hear our prayers and heed our cries as we yearn to grow closer to you. Shower us with your grace and light the fire of wisdom in our minds. Bless us with your presence that we may walk in your truth and live in your righteousness all the days of our lives. Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 131. Gather together.
something to eat. And uh, we'll do a little bit more uh, refining, but bring a covered dish and uh, I'll visit with Virginia because she and I are the ones that are in charge. I didn't know she wasn't going to be here today. So. But uh, 6 o'clock in Lemon Park. That's in the private. Which other house are you doing? You know, I don't know. We didn't reserve one. Do we need to? Do you know? I think during the day. I don't know. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll find out. Yeah. We'll try to get an email out to everybody that gets email and then call everybody else. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, this coming week, Dorothy and I plan to be in Nebraska. Um, they have their annual conference, and we've been uh, manning the booth for uh, Guest Quest. So um, hopefully we'll get back before uh, this hour or next Sunday morning. Because their, their annual conference goes on until Saturday. So. I think we'll have to cut out before. Anyway, uh, and we want to thank the Lord so much for, uh, for sending the rain to me. And blessed to have. Um, I want to point out that Jim Lakey had a four-way bypass the last we heard, and he's recuperating in uh, in St. Louis. Um, we want to pray for Jan Stadelman, brother Hazel Jordan, Jim Lakey, Jordan James, Marvin Hessel, Hessel Tom Reason. Denise Bevins, Glenn Laurie, Dick Smith, Lindsay Nasser, Dorothy Casting, and all the others who are on our prayer list. Any other? Uh, Joyce? I'm just thankful you were here. Uh, I'm not sure if you're here. It means you're too old to have little kids in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> or not only them. <laughs> I do want to remind you, though, that uh, next Wednesday we have 7 a.m. service at First United Methodist in uh, <coughs> John, 7 a.m. Uh, if you can make it, we'll be delighted to see you. Uh, it's like filling up your car with gas, you know. You fill it up sun every Sunday afternoon, and by Wednesday you're down, you need another. Half a tank, at least. Uh, so come on uh, Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Look forward to seeing you. Okay, uh, let us now go to God in prayer. <coughs> Loving God, we're so grateful for the gift of new children, of new grands and great grands. We thank you for that. We thank you for the gift of this day entrusted into our care and into our hands. Help us within its opportunities and responsibilities to love as you have loved us, to love as we have been loved by others. Remember those who walk through places shadowed with grief and death. May they find light and peace on their way. Be with those in need of strength and healing, and enable us, as we are able to serve, as your instruments of healing and support <coughs> in their lives. Father, we ask that you bless those in Oklahoma who have uh, been going through some terrible days and times. Bless those who uh, who are left behind to mourn. Please receive those who have gone on be in your kingdom. <clears throat> Stand with those who feel alone. Guide your church that you might be the body of Jesus Christ. Not simply in what we say about you or about ourselves, but in the trust we keep and the compassion we exercise and the love we embody. 
All these we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Eternal God, we ask a blessing on this entire congregation. All those who are here, all those who cannot be here, all those who would like to be here. We ask a blessing on all our families, wherever they might be, be with them. Bring them through safely. Bless all our institutions. Uh, bless our children who are at home right now, uh, away from school, away from college. Bless the schools and the colleges. Bless the faculties and staff. And bless all those who uh, protect us around the world, keep them safe. And Lord, we ask that uh, you bless our president and the cabinet and all those in charge of government and all those in charge of our troops, that they may be able to bring them back on quickly, safely, expeditiously. Uh, these are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Let us now sing hymn number 130. God will take care of you.
Uh, please turn with me in your New Testament, the back of the Pew Bible, if you use the Pew Bible, it's on page 64. The back is Luke chapter 7, 1 through 10. Luke chapter 7, 1 through 10. And listen to the Word of God. It comes to you from the Gospel of Luke chapter 7. After Jesus had ended all his sayings and the hearing of the people, Jesus entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a slave who was dear to him, who was sick and at the point of death. When he heard of Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking Jesus to come and heal his slave. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him. For he loves our nation, and he built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Jesus, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I did not presume to come to you, but say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes. And to another, Come, and he comes. And to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled at him, and turned and said to the multitude that followed him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave well. He stood with me to the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Paul to the Galatians, which is found in the New Testament uh, in the Pew Bibles on page 177. Page 177. Galatians 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle, not for men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with us. For the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. To whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a contrary a gospel to that which you received, let him be accursed. Am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still pleasing men, I should not be a servant of Christ. For I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, Listen to that <coughs> letter of Paul to the Galatians. I want to address your attention to keep the faith. Keeping the faith. Keeping the faith that was first given to you from the apostles and the disciples and the apostles and the apostles Paul. And of course later we're going to be uh, reading the, the uh, creed, the apostles creed. And I want you to keep the faith pure and undefined. The Galatians were confused by new teachings that rejected the grace and guidance of Jesus Christ. God loves us all. 
God loves all people, all nations. And God has left the guidebook for us. God has left the Bible for us. So that we might be able to follow the true and the living God. But I want you to imagine what would it have been like to live as a believer during the first generation of Christian believers. Here was Jesus Christ and he came, he established a church and he left and created a vacuum right there. Imagine having lived in the area of Galatia, which is a part of Asia Minor. Uh, today we call it Turkey. And uh, the people who are there now might not have been there at that time. In fact, Muhammad wasn't even born until 600 years after Jesus Christ. Um, I know Turkey today is a different faith or something, but uh, you know, in those days it was Asia Minor. And some of the early Christian believers were led to the gospel by the preaching of St. Paul. Paul was the first uh, Methodist circuit writer. You know, he, uh, he uh, came through for a while on one of his missionary journeys. These took years. And he'd stay there and he'd uh, preach and the Lord would raise up a, a man uh, would be a teacher or a preacher. And Paul would, would infuse this into him, I think, day and night. And Paul would teach him all about Jesus Christ and Christianity. And then Paul would preach in the churches. And after he found, well, this guy is competent enough to carry on, he would then gracefully move on. But remember, there were no Bibles, no book of discipline, no book of order, no, uh, no, no guidance at that time. Uh, it was just the preaching, the preaching of Paul, the preaching of the persons he left behind, the teaching of their parents. So he preached the gospel for a while, and then he taught, and then he moved on to other places. Now what happened after this, after he left, there were people, Jewish people, who would come behind Paul. And everything he tried to teach, they would try to unteach. You now Christianity has always had this opposition. Satan knows the truth, and Satan doesn't want us to have the truth. So, whatever you hear in Christianity, know that Satan is there trying to destroy what you've heard, trying to destroy and lead you in a different direction in which the gospel of Jesus Christ is leading you. Now, these people came and they taught the Galatians, that they had to fulfill the demands of the Jewish law before they could become Christians. Now Jesus came to fulfill the law. He was a Jew in, in the flesh. And he came to fulfill the law. But then he came to give us freedom. Freedom from the law. In fact, there were ten commandments, as you know. And when Jesus came, he said, you know... This is a lot for little people to understand. He said, I'm going to give you just two little commandments. This is going to cover everything. Love God, love your neighbor. If you follow those two things, you've got all the Ten Commandments covered. And we think that when we hear the truth, the truth will set us free. Well, the truth sets those who receive Jesus Christ by faith. The truth sets those of us free. If we're, for those of us who are not rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, we can hear the truth a million times and it makes no difference. Let us look at Jonestown in Guyana. How can a thousand people go 3,000 miles across the United States, another thousand miles to Guyana, go into the jungles, give all their social security dollars to the pot, and then follow this man even 
to death. Well, today we have many other Gospels. There's Jim Jones, there's Koresh, there's all kinds of Gospels. But I want to point out a few just for your attention. There's the Gospel of Hate, and it's so easy to, to hate. So easy. It's easier to hate than it is to love. And the Gospel of Hate is exemplified as disputed out by followers of Westboro Baptist Church. Uh, you probably heard of that. And they're picking soldiers' funerals. And I think their philosophy is if you're a soldier and you're dead, you're going to a very hot place. I'm not sure where they got their philosophy, but this philosophy of hatred uh, is so prevalent in that Westover Baptist church. Then there's the gospel of prosperity. Well, you know these guys, they're pretty slick, they're nice uh, suits and ties. And, uh, they tell you, nib it and clean it. Um, it's not found in the Bible, but that's what they teach. You nib it and you clean it. And you know what? You're going to be very, very rich if you would sit down there, write me a check, send it in, and I'll pray over the check for you as I drive my. I don't want to call any particular make of car as I drive my airplane and uh, have my uh, four or five mansions. And, you know, you keep writing those checks so that we can send this ministry out to other people and you will be blessed. You name it and God will give it to you. God is obligated to do that. And send money in for my ongoing ministry. Well, you send money in every week, you put money in the plate, and aren't you blessed that some of that money is now at work in Oklahoma? The little offerings that you put in your plate, some of that money is working right there. Some of that money is working around the world, helping those in need. Okay, some of the money is used to put the lights and keep the fan on and candles burning and uh, to pray the pastor and some of it is used for that but aren't you so glad didn't you wonder after the second tornado or third tornado in Ohio how can I be of service well, I want to assure you that you are being of service right now Uncle is serving those people and every time I meet uh, Linda, who's uh, in charge of our disaster response for Kansas West, she reminds me that we should be sending some volunteers to learn how to be responders. We should be sending some volunteers to learn how to sort of put a nail in a piece of wood or whatever it is, clean a piece of wood. And, uh, we should be sending volunteers. And she has courses which teach us how to do that. Then of course there's the social gospel. Humanity can rid itself of social evils. We get better and better every day we become more and more like Christ. All of us. And uh, the social gospel completely forgets that Mother Nature is getting more vicious. Social gospel forgets that we are turning more heat and putting more heat in the atmosphere and the oceans are getting warmer and the glaciers are sliding off and ice is melting and the atmosphere is getting more hostile and we're getting more hostile. I, I, I think they, they have not heard anything about shootings in the cinemas or shooting teachers and kids. They don't hear that. The social gospel makes us little angels. We're getting better and better. And of course, there's the apocalyptic gospel, which, wow, Jesus is going to come one day like a hoover and suck up the good guys and leave the bad guys there and they're going to burn up. Well, where is the love? Why aren't we out there trying to tell others about Jesus Christ? So that one day there will be none of them left. We'll all be 
good guys, we will all be Christians. Well, the different Gospels the Galatians believed was the Gentiles had to be circumcised as Jews before they could become Christians. Now, Paul never thought that. And it's so easy to do a religion where you've got to do something, you know, you've got to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning and bow down and hit your head on the wall, on the floor, and you've got to be there at midday and hit your head on the floor. You know, you've got to do all these things. It's so easy to get people to believe that stuff. As Christians, all we've got to believe is that we come to Jesus Christ by faith, we confess our sins, we ask Him to receive us into His holy kingdom. Outward circumcision was uh, was passé. It was the thing to do before uh, Christianity. Jesus Christ came. He was a Jew. He was circumcised. But Paul tells us that people needed spiritual circumcision, not physical. In fact, this is the way he puts it in Romans 2.29. A person is a Jew who is one outwardly and real circumcision is a matter of the heart. It is spiritual, not literal. Well, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, you may be circumcised. You know, you have a son, he may be circumcised, that's fine. But it doesn't mean that that's going to get you or him to heaven. That's something, a ritual that's carried out by the Jews. But true circumcision is circumcision of the heart. My friends, the gospel is not a human construction. The gospel comes from God. The grace of God is embodied and enacted in Jesus' death. <clears throat> burial and resurrection. As children of God, we serve God. We praise God. We worship God. We give unto God what is what we can afford, what we'd like to give, and we give from our hearts. And the reason we give from our hearts is because God doesn't need it. But because we give to our church and we give to those in need, because Jesus says we must love our neighbors. And our neighbors are our friends, our neighbors are our enemies. We must love those in need. We serve and worship and praise God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God. And then we love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us respond appropriately to the gospel as we keep the faith. Amen. Let us now uh, repeat the Apostles' Creed as found on page 881. Page 881, the Apostles' Creed. And we remember to keep the faith, and we follow the creed, and the faith is given to us by the apostles. Let's repeat it together. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I thank thee, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. See, there was nothing there about circumcision. Anyone who teaches you anything other than 
what the gospel teaches you, let him be accursed. Let us repeat our offering prayer together. Our little bulletin. Bless these offerings we return to you, O God. Rain upon them with the holy fire of your miraculous grace and love. That as these gifts go forth into the world, people may sense your presence and know your power and love. In the holy name we pray. Amen.
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to Luke, on the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and he lifted it to his Father, and he blessed it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we eat the bread, do we not share in the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he raised it to his Father. And he said to them, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we drink the wine, do we not share in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Let us eat, feast together with Jesus Christ by faith. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you. Let us come in together. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you.
Let us now sing hymn number 124, Seek the Lord.